What's going on guys? <laughs> We're finally gonna get back up in the air it looks like. <laughs> First time in like two months. Anyway, I'm super stoked bra. And you might notice that there's a, a change of location. We're launching from a park. Rock on. Don't have to worry about, you know, airspace too much. But I do want to say, when it comes to launching from parks, I have been burned before. I, I've been grounded before I even got to take off once last year because the groundskeeper came up and said they don't allow power paragliders to fly out of their park because, you know, they did allow it, but too many paragliders were flying around like soccer games and stuff and kids weren't paying attention and getting hit in the face with balls and stuff and getting hurt. And to me, as a new flight, well, semi-new, I've been, I started flying in 2018, but I only have a few dozen flights under my belt. But even I know, an amateur like me knows, you don't fly around like crowded games like that and risk giving the sport a bad name and ruining it for other flyers like myself. So if you get into the sport, don't be a tool, okay? Use some common sense. There is nothing going on over here, all right? This is a very busy soccer field in the soccer season, but it's not soccer season. So I come here instead of the local airport. Um, there is archery going on over there, but it's basically done now. I don't even see like maybe a few people wrapping up because it's getting kind of late. But I'm not going over that way anyway because, again, there's Class D, air sp Class D airspace way over there. Plus, you know, power, power lines. Not good. I'm not going that way. So I'm staying over here. Uh, this is my territory. So the winds are awesome. We'll talk about some of the limiting factors that can ground you besides other people and other flyers once we're up in the sky. But, man, this might be, as far as winds are concerned, the, the most smooth air I might ever fly in. It's, it's perfect. It's like two mile per hour winds all the way up to like 10,000 feet. Clear prop. Here we go. we reverse launch? I think we do. I think we shall. Right. One shifted on me. Heading right towards the building now. We'll see. If it looks bad, like a bad launch, we won't launch. I wasn't sure which way that was going to go. When in doubt, abort. All right. Tip number two. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go.
Finally, we are up. I say that as we're going down, deliberately. There's Columbus City right there. How about that? It's beautiful up here, man. Freedom. This is freedom. some altitude and then I'm going to explain why exactly I haven't been up in too long. I'm going. feet that uh, during the launch or during my pre-flight or setup or something my uh, altimeter settings got changed so I had to reset them so I'm at about a thousand feet highest I've been in a while actually so that's idle and I'll talk about why exactly it's it's been so long so to kind of do like a little Venn diagram on screen for you there are several variables or parts of an equation that come into play that allow you to fly. You can't just go up whenever you want, which is unfortunate, considering how free the sport is otherwise when it comes to like the government and regulations and stuff. So the first little bubble, I guess, would be time. So if you want to play it on the safe side, and unless you got like a powered parachute, we have wing, you don't want to fly during the day. You want to keep your flight time to, you know, the first two hours of daylight and the last two hours of daylight, which is what we're flying right now. And the reason for that is thermals. Paragliders love them, but we don't so much because it can cause collapses and it's just no good. Unless you got like the right kind of wing or again, a parachute. So time's a big factor. It really, it really prevents you, it really cuts your, your flight time, your allowed flight time down to the bone. The next variable or bubble would be location, which we kind of discussed on the ground. So, again, this sport is very unregulated, which is what's so nice about it, which is why it's better than flying like a Cessna, like a private pilot. I mean, part 103 is the ultralight part, but it's very skim, skimp. Um, so the location's pretty, pretty wide open as long as you're not flying in like class D airspace or above so you can launch out of airports um, and if it's county airport technically you don't even need permission unless they can unless them like the airport manager goes to the FAA and says you're a nuisance otherwise you're a taxpayer you're good to go but at the same time do you really do you really want to be butting heads with an airport manager you know so I, I still go to up to them and ask them if it's cool. A couple of them said no, that's fine. My local one said yes. But I still rather fly out of parks, which is another location. 
But here's the thing, the reason that's kind of a restriction in a way is because again, you don't want to be flying around the fence. Not so much because you can't, I mean, kind of you can, depending on exactly your proximity, but you're just going to become a nuisance because these, these motors aren't quiet, as you can tell. And these things are a distraction. So if there's like a soccer tournament going on, you might want to find a different place to launch. If you don't have another place to launch, even if the, like every other variable and the Venn diagram is good to go, you might just want to be, do the courteous thing and just ground yourself, which is what I've done before several times. So I guess the third bubble on our Venn diagram would be availability. Maybe, maybe that's the second bubble. I don't know, it's a bubble. So just because you can fly during the first two and the last two hours of the day doesn't mean you personally have the time to do that. So for me, that's, do I have a video I gotta do, another kind of video? Do I have a SpaceX live stream to do for a, a launch? Do I have any engagements going on? You know, it's common sense stuff. Do I do I forget to check and see if I can fly that evening or morning? Do I not wake up on time? That's another big one. But the biggest bubble on our diagram, by far, is weather. Weather will ground any power paramotor pilot 95% of the time. You know, you don't want to fly when it's stormy, all right, when it's rainy, or even when it's too humid and, and the air is just saturated with water. Uh, a lot of people in this sport know Tucker get die, or Tucker got, if not all of them. And Tucker actually just lost one of his good friends. He's put videos up about it. But what, what they think happened was he went out one morning par power paragliding and it was a human morning or foggy or something. It was, I don't think it was foggy. You're not supposed to fly in the fog, but it was like a low cloud layer. And they think his wing got damp. And when that happens, your wing can stall. And he might have also had the, uh, the trims all the way in, which decreases your angle of attack, which again, can make you stall more easily. And unfortunately he passed away. And I, I would say the biggest issue with weather though, is the wind. I was trained at Midwest PPG, as a lot of you guys know, great training, man. And they taught us to be on the safe side, air on the safe side, and the safe side, as far as wind is concerned, is no more than eight mile per hour winds with two to three mile per hour gusts. Now, here in Ohio, I found that's quite rare. <laughs> uh, I've been burned more times than I can count in just this last year alone. As a lot of you guys on my locals page are aware, um, I went out to the local airport one time, hauled all my gear out there, laid the wing out, kited it, and it was just, the, the all the weather apps lied to me, bro. Even the, I think it's the, they call it the ATIS, even that lied to me. The automated, no, it's the AWOS, automated weather system. It lied to me, it said the winds were that bad, but they were terrible. So I was grounded that time, and that really, that really depressed, like, unmotivated me, you know? Because it's a lot of work getting this stuff up here. Now, some more experienced pilots will fly in more than eight mile an hour per hour wind with, you know, 10 mile an hour gusts. I have no reason to push it, all right? I'm not that experienced, and I don't have a death wish. I love life. Ooh, little chopper. I'd rather keep living it when I get some altitude. All right, that's about 900 feet. Someone's got a fire going on over there, and just past that, you probably can't see it on the on the GoPro, but I definitely picked a good evening. You can always you always know when you pick a good evening because they got the uh, hot air balloons out too hot air balloon way over there. I see him from my backyard from time to time and the dogs like to bark at him. It's kind of hilarious. One of these days I'm going to fly around my backyard 
and let the call the wife and let her know so the dogs can bark at me too. But not this time. Right now we're just gonna fly near the uh, park. Get used to my get used to my wings some more. But anyway, again talking about wind. And and, and that we're just talking kind of like you know ground ground speed wind, ground level winds. When obviously right now we're not on the ground, so you also need to check you know, as they would say in rocketry, upper level winds, but we don't go that far up. Just, you know, winds at altitude. Even if you have perfect kind of winds on the ground and you have all of a sudden like <laughs> hurricane winds at 500 feet, you're not gonna fly and live, okay? And also what direction the wind's coming from. If you have a 180 degree like shear, wind shear or even 90 degree, you might wanna be like, no, no thanks, bro. I'll sit this one out, dude. And that's why it's so important to get training in the sport and not just say, oh, I can handle it and just launch yourself without any training. That's a that's a great way to go in the grave a little bit quicker than you're supposed to. And then once all those variables, variables are met, you got that little white dot in the middle of the Venn diagram, and that's you. Congratulations, you can fly like I am right now, all right? So that's why, in a nutshell, to explain at length why we're up here looking at some clouds, or at least pretending to, that's why I don't get up as much as I, I want. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to put on some tunes and rip this shit up. So 
Lean forward. Whoa. Ah. Woo! That was a sloppy landing. <sighs> the turbulence you get off of that building. I definitely felt it. Oh my gosh. Well, that's something I didn't really think about. Holy cow, the wing was totally bouncing around on that landing. I've never felt such a bouncy landing before. And then at the very last second, it just completely shifted like 10 degrees. Bro, look at my windsock, man. It's 90 degrees about. The wind actually picked up. That's why I could feel the turbulence coming off that building. I remember to lean forward, but then I, I freaked out and I forgot to flare until I was like almost on my knees on the ground. But I did flare and... I leaned so far forward that I skidded on my knees, which was great. I wear these knee-long pants, so that helps. That's mostly so my shorts don't ride up there while I'm flying. <laughs> but uh, my lawyer wife likes to make fun of them. But that kept the motor off the ground, so that's, that's a very inexpensive mistake to make. In fact, it's preferable. Anyway, yeah, it was fun. Until next time, Godspeed.